Okay, folks, uh, Dr. Shane, we're back again uh, here. So this is a video for week two, and I just realized that uh, there's something in the way. Sorry about that. We'll need that. Okay, so uh, for week two, before you come to lab, you should have uploaded a scan version, a PDF, I guess it's preferable, uh, to D2L from all those science, significant figure sign notation problems from last week, give you some points there. Uh, upload the quiz as well, that should be done before you come to lab. Uh, the activity for this week is called Lab Balance and Glassware, it's on D2L. Uh, calculator mask, all that good stuff, watch this video, it's kind of obvious if you're listening to this. And the whole point of doing all this ahead of time, folks, is so when you walk in the lab, you can start collecting data. This is your pre-lab lecture. So we're not gonna take time to do another pre-lab lecture. There'll probably be a few comments just to get oriented, and that's fine, but then you're just gonna get going. And that's what I'm gonna preview here is what does that mean? Get going with what? Okay, so um, I think I'm gonna come out from behind. I think we're recording, we're good. And I think I can put this back in place. Again, I'm the only one in here, so I'm not wearing a mask. Just so you don't turn me in. That was just a bad joke. Hope everybody's doing okay. All right, uh, I've got the handout here. So you'll, you'll want that. I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna do everything. I'm just gonna kinda go over most of this and I think I'll have to go back and show you how to use the analytical balance a little bit better than I did with that other video. Okay, so the basic goals here are how do you properly use an analytical balance to determine mass? How do you properly measure volume, which is a capital V, lowercase v is velocity, and then a piece of equipment called a pipette. That is an essential piece of equipment in a laboratory. It doesn't look very high tech, but if you ever do any kind of laboratory work, pipetting is a big skill. And not just the pipettes where you dial the volume in, if you've seen it, I'm just kind of moving my hands around, and you press a little plunger and you know do this kind of thing. That's fine. Those are expensive, some labs can't afford those, and also the gears on those things tend to grind and it gets out of calibration, so they're not always necessarily the best option, depending on what you're using, although those are really good to use. Um, so we're gonna do some lab skills, and I'll demonstrate some things here. Also, we're gonna use that formula for density we used before, but we're not gonna calculate a density, we're actually gonna calculate a volume. So let's just briefly, so you might remember that density, lowercase d, let's use symbols now, is mass divided by volume. Uh, just getting to something on the back side. Yeah, yeah. The back side, there's some calculations where it says calculate the theoretical volume. I'm not worried about what that means yet. So you're calculating a volume using density. And you're given a density of water as, and we're just gonna use water with this lab, it's pretty straightforward, uh, 0 0.998, 0 0.998 grams per milliliter. So I'm actually not gonna do this math, I'm just setting it up for you. So if you're given this, you'll have a mass from the lab and you'll wanna solve this equation for uh, volume. So hopefully you know how to do this. It's in the lab, I think we made it a little bit too explicit. So if you want to solve this equation for volume, go ahead and do that algebraic. What would volume be? So stop the video. And it's been a while since you've done algebra. I don't mean to insult your intelligence. But how would you solve this equation? So let's see. We multiply and bring volume. Up. Okay, so volume is going to be the mass divided by the density. So you'll have grams in the numerator, grams per milliliter in the denominator, and when you do the math, the grams will cancel and the milliliters will then flip up into the numerator, so your answer will be milliliters. So just make sure you kind of think through how to solve this algebraically. So you'll take a mass from lab, you'll take this density, and you'll calculate a volume. And you'll do that for different things. That's all I'm gonna say about that now. Uh, the calculations, I think, are pretty straightforward. The other calculation you're doing is called um, percent error, which I think is pretty well spelled out. I don't think I'm going to go over that uh, here yeah, in class or in this video, sorry. So I'm just going to go through some of the equipment. All right. 
Um, so just briefly, looking at the procedure, uh, make sure you read it. The first procedure is for the balance. Okay, I'll show you that later. I think it's pretty easy. You're gonna get some object. I think we're giving you a piece of aluminum. I don't really remember. You describe it qualitatively, that's fine. Take a beaker, 50 milliliter beaker, back to the balance room, record what its mass. Uh, put this object in there, record the mass of the beaker plus the object, and then subtract the two. That's called measuring a mass by difference. So you subtract the mass of the empty container. Then you're also gonna uh, find the mass of this by just putting it on uh, the pan directly, I think. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You put the beaker on to hit the tear button, re zero. Okay. I'll show you that later. That's fine. Glassware. Um, so there's four pieces of glassware that you're going to compare, and I've got them right here. So the, the big picture question here is, what's the best way to measure a volume? This is, I'm going backwards here. This is a 50 milliliter burette. It's pronounced burette, not buree. This is a 10 milliliter pipette and pipette bulb. So we'll get both of those, whoa. Uh, we have these over in a box on the side. We'll get you those. Pretty familiar piece of equipment, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and a 100 milliliter beaker. So the big question is, which piece of equipment is the best for measuring volume? Which one is going to give you the best agreement between an experimental volume and a calculated volume? That's the big picture here. That's why we're doing this. Uh, just take a minute, you can even make a hypothesis. Which do you think is the best piece of equipment for volume and which piece of equipment is you think is the worst? Hopefully you probably have an idea this one is not that great for measuring volume, but we'll get there. All right, um, and I'm just gonna briefly review this, each piece of equipment. So, determine the mass of the empty, dry, okay. Pour approximately 25 mils of water, okay. I'm not gonna do this whole procedure exactly. I'm just gonna put a bunch of water in here. This spigot over on the side is deionized water. You'll use the big jugs of water that are in the room. Those are deionized water at room temperature. That's actually kind of important density is temperature dependent. But for purposes here, okay, so that's just, and if I'm being more explicit here, I'm sorry I'm not wearing face protection for this video, but it's water, I'm kind of showing bad example here. You know what, maybe I'll be a better example and at least have my goggles on, but there's nobody in the room, so no mask. Okay, so you record the mass of this empty, you pour approximately 25 milliliters. I'm not gonna bother being precise about what I'm doing, but you be more precise. Pour approximately 25 mils, and then you record the volume. How do you record the volume? Well, first thing you do with the volume, you don't hold it on like this and record it. That would be dumb. Make sure it's on a flat surface, and then you look at it straight on, and you should be able to estimate the last digit. That's about all I'm gonna say there. So you might be able to get 28 milliliters, 26 milliliters. So record it by estimating the last digit that the graduations give you. That's something I want you to really think about, actually. Um, and then you record the combined, combined mass of the beaker and the water. So you, you go record the mass of the beaker plus the water, subtract the two to get the water, okay. So you'll have the mass of the water in here, no problem. Fine, you're basically doing a similar procedure for everything. The graduated cylinder, record the mass of an empty, pour approximately eight milliliters. I'm just, that's not eight, I just poured some in there. Uh, make sure the, bubble, the bubbles all go, and then you read it by looking straight on. Record the last digit. You should be able to guesstimate at least one decimal place, maybe two, but you'll have to look at it and see. Uh, oh, you're told to do it to three significant figures. Then you record the mass with this and subtract the two, fine. Those two pieces of equipment are pretty easy. The pipette, this is gonna take a little time. Students get better at this skill than I am. This is a, a graduated pipette, and it's 10 milliliters if you look at the side. Actually, if you look at the side, this is actually, I'm gonna make this point now. There's a little 
letters there, now you can see them here, it says TD. This means to deliver. So whenever you fill it up to four, it delivers that volume. A graduated cylinder is what's called a TC instrument, to contain. This instrument is measure, better excuse me, at delivering volumes. This is really to contain it. So graduated cylinders are not the best for delivering a volume because some of it remains in here. So this is a TC, to contain. This is a TD, to deliver instrument. So we're doing the same thing though. Record it, record the mass of a 100 milliliter beaker uh, empty pipette 10.00 mils into the beaker. Okay, I don't, what, what's that mean? So I've got an empty, dry, 100 milliliter beaker. I'm just going to pretend that this is uh, uh, empty and dry. It's not. <laughs> it's 100 milliliter. So we've emptied this, we've dried it. And we've recorded its mass. Record the exact, yeah, okay. Okay, so this is actually pretty good for getting volume, but I need to show you how to use this. This is, this is key. Okay, you, you don't pour water into this. It's open at the bottom and it's open at the top. It doesn't make any sense. So basically, what we're going to do is, it's almost like a sophisticated straw. We want to draw a liquid up until we get the desired volume. The desired volume here is the zero, because when it's put on the zero, it drains out and this will be 10 mils. And I should have said something before. I think some of you know this. When you record the volume, especially if it's water, water kind of has this little crescent shape to it that's called a meniscus. You record the volume from the bottom of the meniscus. Okay, because it kind of like, well, where, where do you start? It looks a little odd. You'll see that better in lab, and some of you have seen that before. So what our goal is, we want to put the bottom of that meniscus right on that zero. And I'm not going to spend too much time showing you this. I just want to show you the basics. So pipetting. The basics of pipetting. This is a pipette bulb. It's, it's basically like a fancy top to a medicine dropper. If you've ever used this, the medicine dropper. Don't you? you squeeze the medicine dropper, you put it in the liquid, and you drop the stuff over here. It's essentially that, but a little bit more sophisticated. A couple safety things. You never pipette directly from the container, but from the liquid you're taking. Here, it's irrelevant we're using water. But say we put out a, a bottle of something and want you to pipette. You always pour it into a secondary container. So let's pretend we poured from a big container of water into a smaller container of water, and, we're, and I'm gonna pipette from a secondary container. We'll mention more about pipetting as the semester goes on. So pipetting skills, you can get YouTube videos for this. You take the pipette and put it in the uh, container. Don't push it on the bottom very hard. Just kind of let it gently sit in there. And it's quite helpful if you have the graduation, the numbers so facing you so you can see them. Depress the ball and gently set the ball on the top. It forms a seal very well. If it doesn't, you probably have a broken pipette ball. And then you carefully I don't know if you can see this. Release the pressure on the bulb and let it expand outwards, and water is being drawn up into the pipette. And what I do is I go past the mark that I'm shooting for, so zero, and then once you do that, you can take the pipette bulb off and put your finger on the top. Now, the water then fell up below the mark that I wanted. So, if I, so I'd have to actually depress the bulb and add some more water. Okay, there. Now, um, you do not have to press down really hard with this ball. You don't have to jam it on there or screw it down tight. You just gently put it on so you can release it. And I'm gonna do a bad example here because you would never do this in the lab just to make a point. So, um, here's the zero. Here's my meniscus. I wanna let the, oh, there goes an air bubble. You don't want the air bubbles, you want to get rid of those, tap the air bubbles out. And you want to get that meniscus, so the bottom is right on that zero mark. And I'm just going to probably do this as a bad example. You want to let a little air in, but do this closer to the container or over the sink. Don't do it in midair like I'm doing. And let a little air in. This is fun if you've had a lot of coffee. And slowly let the water go out. Um, 
my meniscus is still a little high, but just kind of, it's too boring for you to sit here and watch me do that. And if for whatever reason your finger slips and you go down below, then you just have to add more water and try it again. So the idea is you want to put that meniscus right there, and that's a very precise volume measurement. And we'll talk more about this later. There's a little bit of liquid left in the pipette, if you can see that down there. That's fine. This is a TD instrument, 10.0, I'm gonna let you look at the procedure. The volume is meant to come out, so what you don't wanna do is, is try to force that last bit out by like, and don't do this in the lab, it's unsafe, by spraying, or pushing that out, you don't wanna do that, okay? Just let it drain. The thing you can do is if there's a drop hanging off the edge, touch it to the side of the glass, and it will draw out that last drop that might be stuck there at the bottom. So this is a very good instrument for that. Pipetting is an essential laboratory skill. And I think that's it for the pipette. Uh, the burette, you, okay, empty dry beaker recorded, fine. Record the initial volume, okay, what? Okay, how do you use a burette? This is a burette, the water comes out the bottom, a graduated cylinder, the water obviously comes out the top. Okay, a couple things. Graduated cylinders read from the bottom up. One, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah, okay. That tells you how many milliliters are in there. Kind of obvious. Burettes read from the top down. It tells you how much has come out the bottom. So it starts at zero, kind of like this, and goes to 50. So what you do is you record the initial volume, whatever that is, it's probably easiest to start it at zero, and I'll let you think about the decimal places because that's hugely important. And what does the procedure tell us to do? Deliver approximately 25 milliliters. Okay, well, what do I do? Well, it does, as long as you put some water in here and you go above 25, just record the initial volume. How do, how do you put water in this? So a couple things. Oh, this is a, a sorry, ring stand, ring stand, ring stand, a burette, burette clamp. Okay. Fine. Uh, this is called the stopcock. It's the valve, and make sure that the there's there's a hole through there, and it's open. Oh, sorry, it's closed when it's in this position. It's open when it's in this position. So make sure it's closed. This is tight. And we want to put some water in here. You can use a funnel, but I don't think you need a funnel. It's just, uh, if you're careful, use a beaker. And you can fill it the whole way if you want to. But for argument's sake, I'm not gonna do that. And tap it, try to get the air bubbles off the side, the air bubbles actually disrupt the volume measurements, make sure there's no air bubbles anywhere. And if you think there's some air bubbles stuck down in here, you can drain some water out. And I just put water in our clean, dry beaker. That was dumb. So this is now magically clean and dry. Uh, and it says approximately 25 mil. So it says record the initial volume. So you're gonna read this top down. So I'm gonna, this is not gonna make any sense you watching me. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 and here's 13, and there's the meniscus, so it's 13.1, okay. So I'll let you figure that out. So you read it top down. Okay, now it says to approximately 25 mil, so I'm at 13. So I'm gonna let 25 more mils go, so uh, it was actually about almost 13 and a half. So make sure you write that down, that's your initial volume. So 20, so 13 plus 25, uh, let's see, that's 35, 38. So I wanna to go to about 38 and a half milliliters. And it doesn't, it's not, as long as you record it, so you let that drain, it doesn't have to be exactly 25, just you're doing 25, I think, for some other things too. Okay, you get the idea. So you add approximately 25 mils, let's pretend you did that. Go back and record the mass of these things together. And I think that's it. Record the mass of the water. And the rest of these things are calculations. So 
each piece of equipment has its own sort of nuances. A beaker and a graduated cylinder are pretty easy. Pipetting is not. And the 50 mil burette is a little bit more complicated than meets the eye. The last thing I want to show you, and I kind of showed you before, is the um, analytical balance. And I'm just going to use a piece of chalk for that. So I'm coming out from behind the camera. Let's take a walk. I think we're still recording. Yep. To the balance room. We're going to make sure you come back here in small groups, not really not even a group, individuals, so you're socially distant. There's only four balances in here. Uh, and I guess I'll show you two of them. So, so here we go. Um, most experiments, we don't care what the container weighs. Most experiments, we don't care. But this one, we do, because we're doing some comparisons. So you turn it on, make sure it's zero. Carefully open up the side window. Make sure it's dry, by the way. You don't want to put anything wet on the balance pan. Okay, fine, you get the idea. So you record all those digits, even that zero, because that zero is significant with the um, decimal point. Then you put some object in there. The, most of these, you're gonna either do the aluminum piece or it's gonna be a sample of water. I guess if you're using the same beaker over and over again, you can just use the same mass. Okay, now there's, it's, there's the mass of the two things combined. You subtract them and that'll tell you how much that piece of chalk weighs or the sample of water or whatever it is. The other way of doing this, again, nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, we don't care what the beaker weighs or a plastic weighing boat. So we hit the tear button and it re-zeroes the balance. Again, make sure all the doors are closed. And then you put the object in. So that piece of chalk weighs about 2.391 grams, if you were curious. Okay, so then you'll do some comparisons. How does the mass using the tear button compare to the mass where you subtract the empty container off of the combined mass of the container plus the object? And now I take that off and it reads negative mass, which is weird. So we hit the tear button, so for the next person in line is ready to go. And let's just turn this off now. Uh, this balance over here, just real quick, pretty much the same thing. Hit the on button. Oh, it's missing. It's missing these two uh, side windows. And it also goes to three decimal places. It's actually the same thing. It records three decimal places. And the tear button here is uh, right here in the middle. Maybe we'll stick to just the three, the three new ones because they're, they're new, but we'll see. Okay, um, I think that's all we need to do. Sorry to have this video waving around like that. Uh, we should be in good shape then for week two, and uh, we will finish this up with actual lab instructor. So we will see you in lab, folks. Have a good day.